Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile with another haul video. This one is basically just a very late haul video. I had done a road trip for my day job the week before Christmas, and that went through a multi, a four state area, uh, passing from Illinois into Iowa, then Nebraska, then Kansas, and then Missouri. And I picked up some great stuff that I basically didn't do anything with because then the holidays hit, I was prepping for vacation, I got sick. Uh, so they just sat in boxes and I haven't listed anything uh, even as of now, but wanted to go ahead and, and go through really quickly what I picked up on the haul because I think it's an interesting case study of how I am trying to benefit from the fact that I cover a nine state territory that I have the ability of going into a lot of different geographic areas and individually picking some things up, bringing them back into Illinois uh, and listing them either on Etsy or selling them in my uh, showcase at the Antique Mall that um, can kind of move things around and get them into uh, more, the most sellable uh, location. And uh, th so the, when I started out, the first place I went was in Iowa. I do not remember where in Iowa. Oh, wait, yes I do. I went to Coralville, Iowa. I repeat, I don't remember where I was. I stayed in Des Moines. Coralville in Des Moines? I don't think so. I think it's on the way to Des Moines. Regardless, I went to a Goodwill in Coralville, Iowa. It was a very nice Goodwill, uh, but I initially started a little bit concerned because I picked up a couple of pieces, some piece of California pottery, some American pottery pieces that were pretty highly priced. And uh, I've mentioned this before, I am fully respectful of any Goodwill, any thrift store, any place like that, that they are going to be selling things at a discounted price for people to use for their own benefit. And I am 100% behind that. So I don't get too caught, I don't get too hung up on the idea that if it's, if it's quote unquote too expensive for me for resale, that's my problem, that's not theirs. But what I found at this Chloralville was a couple of the pieces that I found actually were priced too high even if I was going to keep it for myself. There were, uh, and it was definitely skewed to certain brands, uh, and it definitely was all American brands, and I'll talk about that in a minute, that uh, comparing them to what I was finding on eBay, they were listing it more than some of the eBay asking prices, including shipping. So where they were getting their prices, I don't know. Uh, it happened that the first couple of things I picked up had those higher prices, so I thought the whole thing was going to be a bust. But then I just looked a little bit more, and then I started finding all these items that were, I felt, significantly underpriced. Again, even if I was going to keep it for myself. And I think it all goes, it's the obvious, goes to the supply and the demand. One of the items that I picked up is the set of Salem Rooster glasses. Uh, some of the listings say it's a cock of the walk is the name of the pattern. I don't know if that's the official name or that's just what it's been dubbed. But uh, the glasses were 88 cents and I picked up two of them. And comparing them to the listings that were online, this I want to say is probably a 12 ounce size. The 16 ounces were going for 10 to $15 each. Uh, the 12 ounces did not seem to be sell as often or were not listed as often. I'm sure they're not as valuable as the 16 ounce, even if they're not listed, but for 88 cents a piece, I'm sure I can probably get 10 to $15 plus shipping out of these. Uh, and it's a, it's a cute pair. And I think it's probably a case where not to stereotype, not to generalize, but a, a rooster glassware pattern in Coralville, Iowa is probably fairly common. So they priced it accordingly, 88 cents, because they just want to get rid of it. But I live in the Midwest, and I have not seen this pattern before. Uh, and looking at it on uh, Etsy and eBay, it's not super common. I believe there's one pair of the 16 ounce listed on Etsy. And comparing the pattern, I actually think what they're listing is the 12 ounce, because if you look at the picture of the 16 ounces that have sold, the pattern is slightly different. There's more space between the top of the rooster's feathers to this design. So that's neither here nor there. That's not my concern. I can sell these. I think uh, hopefully I can sell them fairly easily, but I'll definitely be able to list them for having under $2 invested. I think I'd be able to turn that around for a decent price. Another example, uh, again, supply and demand, geographic, being very general. This is a 
uh, obviously creamer and a sugar from Kaiser porcelain uh, stamped for, from uh, West Germany. They had other um, sugars and creamers, including a Franciscan, um, it wasn't Franciscan Ivy. I think it was the Desert Rose, if I remember correctly, a sh uh, sugar and creamer priced at $5 each. I, that's not a bad price if I was going to you know, keep it for myself, but that was obviously not something I was picking up for resale. These were 88 cents each. So German porcelain, maybe there's not as much of a call for it in Coralville, Iowa. They priced it low. I picked this up. It is uh, fairly clearly stamped as Kaiser um, West Germany, and it even lists what I thought was the pattern. Uh, what it turns out is Romantica is the shape. So there are different painting decorations that follow the Romantica line. So Romantica is just the line. Um, you can see, uh, hopefully, yeah, you can see it's kind of showing. It's a white on white. It's a very attractive pattern with a gold trim. This would go with a variety of dinner services, anything that's based on, based white. Looking them up online, this particular pattern with the gold trim does not seem common. I don't think it's any more valuable than anything else. Uh, replacements does not have anything in stock. But what is selling is this exact same shape, the Romantica shape, the all white pattern most recently sold, both the creamer and the sugar just sold for $50, uh, according to Worth Point. And there were other listings that were regularly selling these well over 20 uh, in the 25 to $30 range. Now that was for the all white. Maybe because the gold trim, that maybe dates it a little bit more, so maybe that won't be as valuable. But again, for under $2, these are in absolutely perfect condition. And what I really liked about the uh, sugar is it's, it's stamped just like the other ones, but it also has what I'm assuming is the artist's name. And I've not seen it stamped like that before. So I thought that was pretty cool. So these were very uh, nice additions that I think I'll be able to uh, hopefully sell and uh, I will definitely be able to list and hopefully be able to sell them fairly easily. Uh, the last item I picked up at the Coralville store was a collector's plate. Now I've mentioned this before, I tend to steer clear of collector's plates because it's kind of the PTSD of my childhood. I was raised in a house filled with curio cabinets of Norman Rockwell plates and figurines, Donald Zolan. I still have memories of a Christmas where my father very kindly picked up the uh, Little Miss Muffet collector's plate, which was the first in the series that my mother had not finished, and he paid $300 for it. And that was back in the late 70s, early 80s. So that was a lot of money. And that was all supposed to be my college fund. I have since seen that plate in Goodwills for under five bucks. So anyway, collector's plates don't necessarily have a very warm place in my heart, but this is not like any, no collector's plate I ever saw. It is dated December 1978. It is from the Worldwide Art Studios. And from what I can tell doing some research, uh, uh, they did one per year. This happened to be the 10th anniversary and it was a competition uh, that this for the design. And this one was won by Carol Orwick of Memphis State University uh, with her pattern of a grist mill. Now I cannot find any comps of this pattern. For some reason, again, this is the 1978 edition, which is the 10th anniversary, so I would think that that might be a little bit more special, but regardless, the 1977 pattern is all over the place. That seemed to have been very popular, uh, and it's selling fairly fairly regularly, including in 2019, um, anywhere from 10, 15, 20, up to 25 bucks. This one, again, I can't find any examples of. I find this more attractive than the 1977 one. I think the 1977 one, I should have written it down. I believe it was in like Ode to Cotton, and which is absolutely fine. But this is a very clean, very striking block, almost like a, a woodcut print, where the one that's more popular has a lot. It's got several vignettes, and it, it just looks a little busy. This, I think, is very striking. Not everyone's gonna hang a collector's plate in their home, but if somebody's of that uh, demeanor, this, I think, would look really cool. This happened to be, this was $1.88. Evidently, Coralville, Iowa likes 88s. And even you know, comparing it to the lowest comps of the one from the previous year, I should be able to sell this for 10 to 15 bucks easily. I might 
push it to 20 plus shipping just because I do think it's a striking uh, image that I think would catch some people's attention. So that was the result of Iowa. The next state uh, where I was able to, that I visited and I was able to visit one uh, shop. Uh, it actually was an antique mall that I'd been, I had been to before, but the last time I was there was prior to me being uh, having a resale uh, shop that I just visited on my own accord. I was visiting my customer in Lincoln, Nebraska, and so this is a antique mall that's in walking distance of the library called Q Street Mall. And guess what? It's on Q Street. And it's a fairly decent sized mall. I didn't have a lot of time. I was a little bit rushed as I was going through as I tend to do because I'm calling on customers. And I think if I remember correctly, I had to drive into Kansas that night. So I couldn't stay a super long time. But I was zipping through the store, zipping through the mall, and I found literally like this little cubby thing back in the corner, and it was the dollar room. Okay, everyone needs a dollar room. And so I went into this dollar room and, you know, as the name suggests, everything in it was a dollar. And I, I didn't, I won't say I went crazy. I didn't pick up like tons and tons of stuff, but I definitely picked up things that I picked them up because they were only a dollar. Um, it all falls within the types of stuff I, I carry, you know, porcelain, glass, uh, you know, that all this stuff definitely fits into my aesthetic. Um, but I tried to limit myself and I picked up a, a handful of pieces. And what was interesting is they were all from a specific vendor, uh, Booth U, and all of them still had the original price tags from probably when he had a, maybe a different booth and was trying to sell them at full price. And then somehow maybe he lost the booth. I don't know what the story is. And this room was fairly, you know, I won't say it's sizable, but it may be an eight by eight room and it was packed with stuff, primarily books, but it had, book, uh, it had shelves with uh, porcelain as well and all of the original prices were still on there. So one of the items I picked up, as you've probably noticed, I have an interest in these little small plates, coasters, salt dips, uh, butter pats, things like that. I'm gonna say that this is a coaster, but it might just be considered a small plate. Uh, it's relatively shallow, definitely too shallow and too wide to be a salt dip or in a little bit too large to be a, a butter pat. Might be a coaster, but the rim is a little different than some of the others I have. Regardless, I liked the image, uh, it does say something on the bottom, pardon me, while I pull out my frickin' readers. And I want to see, it, I remember when I picked it up before, and I'm, and I'm still in the same boat. It does say something on the bottom, like O de V. I'm not sure what that says. It's just, and it's just because of the way, the, the way it's printed, I just, I can't quite make it out. Uh, so I don't know who this guy is. I did search for him on... Worth Point, eBay, Etsy. I can't find anything like him. Uh, these are not ever going to be particularly valuable, but for a dollar into it, what I was really attracted to is the back, Is it had the Bach uh, label on it, and it specifically says Bach Delft. And I happen to have a very large charger that I picked up that is currently listed on my Etsy store, but until it sells, it sits on my piano uh, because I really like the looks of it. Uh, that is also Bach Delft. So this has a slightly different look to it. I mean, it still says Delft right on there. Um, not 100% clear on the age. Uh, there's you know really no indication on the back. Um, picked it up for a buck. I should be able to sell it for $10 plus shipping, maybe 15 total, including shipping. I just think it's a distractive piece. Uh, another small plate that I picked up was from a brand that I've seen uh, that I've carried before, and I actually just recently sold a coffee pot from Porsgrund, Norway. And I've had now I think a couple of pieces. One is uh, one sold. It was the very first item I ever listed on my Etsy store, and it sold a week or two ago. A beautiful t uh, uh, tall coffee pot, uh, white on white, that rice uh, like the rice pattern. Um, this is also Porsgrund, uh, very high quality, holding it up, the light is behind the camera and I can see through this. Uh, so again, a very nice high quality translucent porcelain. I can't find this pattern. Again, I, I, I never get all that excited that, oh, it's super valuable. But I will say, Worth Point goes back to, I wanna say 2007, if I remember correctly. 
And I did every variation, including just Poor's Grind, and then Poor's Grind Gold, poor, Cart and Horse, Horse, Farmer, every combination. And even with some of the simplest ones and just scrolling page after page after page, I never found this design. So I don't exactly know what the pattern is, which I really just want that kind of stuff to make it as accurate as I can on my listing uh, so that people know what they're getting or if they happen to have this pattern, they'll find it. Um, there are numbers on the back. The first number based on the search, the top number, uh, turned out that appears to be the shape uh, number, the model numbers. Because when I did the search for that number, every, a ton of this type of plate came up. So, And the, several of them called them coasters, some of them called them small plates, whatever. So that first number was actually the mold number, and it does start with an M, I just realized that. Uh, and then the bottom number is a D, I'm going to assume is the design number, but I'm also going to assume Norwegian has their own language and it may not necessarily start with a D, but regardless, that D I'm going to assume is the actual pattern number that would be representing this, I, that I couldn't find. So if anyone knows any information or has recognized this, I'd love to know a little bit more information. But again, I'm looking at this as just a small plate. This one has a more traditional lip that makes this more uh, specifically like a coaster. You know, I'll probably list this for 15 bucks, including shipping, uh, a buck into it. I think it just looks really nice. And um, if it doesn't sell, I'll just add it to my collection like that one. Uh, another plate that I picked up, uh, a little bit larger, uh, this one, I've got this weird little, by coincidence, I keep coming across uh, pieces that are from airlines. And so this is a Swiss air plate that was uh, produced by Porcelain Fabric Langenthal. So I did a little bit of searching for Swiss air Langenthal, and I did find uh, some of this shape of a plate. You can tell it's kind of a squarish shape uh, and some of a very similar pattern. This particular, um, this particular pattern I had found uh, did sell back in 2018. Uh, there were two of them, they both sold for 15 bucks. So again, with a buck into it, he had listed it once upon a time for six. Uh, so I have a buck into it. So as of 2018, it sold for 15. Uh, there are no current listings for this pattern, but there is another, which is clearly from the same family, uh, listing on Etsy right now of two plates that are of the same family, but not of this specific design. Uh, and they're listing those for $60. Uh, now again, that's listing, not sold, so good luck. But this is something I think, again, I could probably list this for 15 to 20 bucks, including shipping. I've got a dollar into it. It's just kind of a cool looking piece. And the fact that it is connected to Swiss Air, you know, I think makes it um, very interesting. I've not been particularly successful in selling salt and pepper shakers, but this is a really just attractive porcelain, hand painted porcelain with a rose pattern, uh, marked made in Japan. Uh, one of them still has the original cork stopper. There's a remnant on the top of what used to be a gold flower design painted into it. So they're not the necessarily the best uh, shape, but for a buck, uh, I anticipate this is probably something that'll go into my showcase at the um, antique store. You know, sell it for like four, three, four, five bucks, double my money, triple my money. I've only got a dollar into them. They, they just look nice. So if people are still collecting salt and pepper shakers, which like I said, I don't think I've sold a single one, so I don't know why people, I think people are collecting them, but uh, that'll be an inexpensive addition to my inventory. Uh, another uh, pair that I picked up, and I call it a pair because it is definitely painted with the same design. It is a pitcher in a bowl. The bottom of the bowl, you see has this kind of a squarish shape, which matches the squarish shape of the pitcher. So it does fit into there, but I find it very odd. So one, it do, it kind of rocks. So I don't know if it's actually designed to purposely sit in there. And if it did, what kind of, even as a miniature, what kind of pitcher and bowl are you using? I mean, it, it wouldn't hold any water once the pitcher was in there. Um, but it, it, they definitely go together. So they were, once upon a time, Booth U had marked them with the two pieces, had, was trying to sell them for $14.50. I bought the pair, it was sold as a pair, I bought the pair for a buck. So I certainly had no concerns picking it up. I will probably try and sell it. It'll probably fall into that nice magical, like the $15, it, it would definitely ship under a pound. 
uh, probably around 15 bucks with shipping included, maybe 20, uh, see how it sells because it is a collector's item for Niagara Falls. I don't know if I said that, but it has a Niagara Falls pattern on there. It is stamped at the bottom, hand painted, Japan, N and C has a little ampersand in the middle. So I found a few other things that were posted or that had sold with that N and C uh, uh, manufacturing stamp. Nothing, it's not a valuable company. You know, it, what they sell is pretty much run of the mill Japan, hand painted Japan stuff. So again, I probably can sell that maybe 15, 20 bucks. Uh, including shipping and um, for a dollar investment very very good uh, but I did walk through the rest of the mall so that was the that was all of the dollar room uh, and I continued to walk through the rest of the mall I found some Christmas ornaments which then ended up going on my tree and have since been put away so you don't get to see those um, but they were um, the sequin like pin the, the the handmade ones that Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage really likes I had a bowl that, you don't care, they looked really good in a centerpiece bowl that I made. I, I had a, a one of the vintage glass tree toppers I put into actually a tall shot glass, but then filled the bowl with these ornaments and with some solid gold, um, not solid gold, some gold colored ornaments that were also vintage. And it just looked really good sitting in the middle of my coffee table. But those have been put away. So that was the only other thing I bought from the store outside the dollar room other than this. So one of the very first items I ever purchased for resale was a uh, charger or chop plate that was manufactured by May and Viv Hamilton at the Vernon Kilns. And it turned out I bought it for $3 and I ended up selling it for 100 And I probably could have sold it for more, but I took a uh, there was a little bit of crazing that I actually made worse because I didn't know what I was doing at the time so I sold it for, I sold it with the crazing problem um, sold it for a hundred bucks but I basically went down a rabbit hole of what is Vernon Kilns and I find it very interesting I joined there's actually a, a Vernon Kilns uh, Facebook group uh, so if you were interested um, they talk a lot about the different uh, brands that were manufactured through there and so when I found this piece it was stamped on the back, authentic Vernon Ware, um, made in the USA. And so I knew that Vernon Ware was Vernon Kilns. I also knew, just from hanging out in that group, um, from different people posting what they had found, this was the raffia pattern. So I did a little bit of searching. It's a divided vegetable bowl, not particularly valuable. I paid $4 for it, and the... Um, the comps for this are selling for, the last one sold uh, for $15. Um, there's one listed on Etsy right now for $32. Uh, so I can probably you know, list it somewhere in between that with free shipping. Um, it's not super common. Uh, and that's one of the things I kind of like. I don't wanna, I, I, I would do it and I have done it, but I don't like to post into Etsy something that already has 15 or 20 examples of it unless I can post as the cheapest one. And then, you know, those other 20 people all hate me. But even selling as the cheapest doesn't mean you're going to sell it. If there's that many listed, there's just not a huge market for it. So pretty much everything else, either I've commented on or if I didn't comment, there are no other examples listed. So what I purchased will be the only one. This one, there is one other listed, but I will be able to be a little bit cheaper than that. And I, I will say this is not a pattern that I find exceptionally attractive. I bought it because I recognized the Vernon Kilns name, and I just wanted to be able to add that to add that into my inventory because it was just something I, I kind of knew. So that was Nebraska. So then the next place I the next state I visited was Kansas, uh, and in Kansas I was able to go to two different stores. Uh, one of them, I apologize, I don't have, I was looking for it. Um, I did, couldn't find the receipt. It was located just down the street from the Kansas City Public Library in Kansas, uh, their main library, because I went there uh, right after my meeting in Kansas City. And it was okay. It, it, it's a, it was an independent thrift store. Uh, some of their prices seemed really high. Some of the prices were really attractive. I ended up picking up a couple of pieces one of which I, I don't regret picking it up, but I needed to pay a little bit closer of attention and I'm not sure if it would have changed my mind. But it was a set for 99 cents. It was a set of Pimpernel coasters and they're Pimpernel 
fairings, F-A-Y-R-E-I-N-G-S. And I've seen that before. Uh, they seem to make coasters. That's what I've always seen them on. And it was a collection of coasters that were Churches of England. And they were all marked on the back with the Pimpernel label. And they say made in England. So I thought that, you know, it's kind of cool. As the box said, the set of six. But what I should have paid attention is when I purchased it, the box was not quite flush to the top. There are only five coasters in the set. Oh, well. So still five coasters, a dollar for all five of them. They're in absolutely beautiful condition. So there's Salisbury Cathedral. Um, okay, I'm not putting on my glasses again. Dunham Cathedral and Exeter. Hey, I can read. Um, I want to say that says Wells, but I'm not sure. And uh, York. Hey, I figured them all out. Uh, so that's York. So, you know, if you got an Anglophile that's, you know, just interested in something inexpensive as a home decor, these are in really good shape, uh, considering they're from like the 60s or 70s. Um, very, very happy to have picked those up for a buck. Uh, the other item that I picked up from there was this little quirky um, dog figurine that has a very odd paint scheme, I feel because I want to say they're Scotties. And I know some Scotties can be white. I think white Scotties are actually Westies, but I, I don't know, maybe a Scotty can actually be white. But I don't know if any of them can actually be black and white. I, I don't know what this is trying to do. Initially, I thought maybe like was this cold painted and the black had come off, but you, know, you can see where the brush marks end into the white. So this was done on purpose. It was made in occupied Japan. Um, again, I have no reason why I should be attracted to those because I don't think I've sold a single piece, but I do like to be able to date things. And so that is, I really like that because it's, you can, it's very specific. We occupied Japan from 1946 to 1952. Some people claim that the stamp was also used in 1945, but, um, the stamp itself is typically from 46 to 52. Um, so you have a very specific window of time that this was made. Not that that necessarily matters to anyone, but because I'm so obsessed about not breaking any Etsy rules, uh, it's kind of nice to know, yay, hey, it's actually vintage. So I picked him up for 99 cents and it's not gonna sell for a lot of money, uh, but I just did the fundraiser for Just One More Dachshund and sold a lot of figurines around this size, some a little bit larger, that pretty regularly were selling happily for $15, including shipping because I think it was just, a, it's a nice, easy price point. Uh, it'll definitely be under a, uh, under pounds, so it'd be able to sell for first class. So I'll net around $10 profit and it would be a nice a nice purchase for somebody themselves or as a gift item. Uh, and I think it is nice that it's, it's uh, stamped as made in occupied Japan. Uh, the other place I was able to uh, visit, well, and I, I traveled hundreds of miles through Kansas. I started in Salina, ended up going to Wichita, up through Overland Park and then into Kansas City. So I can't remember, uh, the one that I just showed was in Kansas City and I can't remember where the Savers was, but it was also somewhere in Kansas. Uh, so I visited the, I think it was near Olathe. Olathe? Olathe, I think it's Olathe. Um, I think that was where this was. Anyway, it was in Kansas. And I picked up a couple of items. Savers, again, a lot of people comment on this. Savers has great prices if you're looking for something for yourself. Again, do not challenge that at all. But their prices tend to not to be particularly attractive to people who are looking to purchase to resell. Uh, but I did find a couple of items. One was a pair of little chickadee figurines, which are not salt and peppers, although I thought that's what they were. Um, they are a pair because you can tell they're slightly different. So they do go together. Of course, they were sold separately, but they were only sold for $1.50 each. So three bucks into them. They are, they still have the original uh, Homeco label and it is Homeco made in Japan. Uh, again, because I like to try and date things and follow Etsy, I tend not to pick up the items that are listed in Taiwan or Hong Kong or Malaysia or Sri Lanka. Um, each one represents a slightly later time frame. Japan is typically one of the earlier ones. Um, so I picked these up. They're in excellent condition. 
this is going to be similar to the dogs. I should be able to sell these for 15 to 20 bucks, including shipping very easily. And that's a really nice return for my $3 investment. Another item which goes a little bit on the higher end of what I typically will pick up, but again, I'm, I'm a big fan of these little dishes. This one might be a salt dip. It might be a master salt, but most likely it's a nut cup. Um, I haven't been able to find the pattern anywhere else to see if it's part of a bigger set because uh, a nut set would typically have a several that would be small like this and then one larger one. Uh, so I'd like to get some confirmation, but with this size, it's a little bit deeper, which makes it, it's, if it's, a, it could be a master salt, but it definitely would be an individual salt because it's just too deep. That would hold a lot of salt. Um, it was $3, which is typically more than I would pay for a piece like this, but it's Herond. And that was a name that I was familiar with very, from years and years ago. Um, my daughter, um, my parents would buy gifts for my daughter when she was little. We've always been a collecting type family. And my daughter had this little, had a set of um, the little, bo little porcelain boxes. And most of the time they were little Hobby Lobby cheap dollar store boxes that were worth nothing. But every once in a while they had a couple nice ones and Herond was one of those higher quality names that popped up every once in a while. And as an interesting side, I had picked this up prior to Christmas, but when uh, I traveled to Vienna with my daughter for Christmas, the hotel that we stayed at actually had a Herond store in the lobby. And as I remembered, everything in it cost a fortune. So I haven't been able to find uh, what the comps on this will be because I can't find this pattern. Um, but the Heron, everything from Heron does sell very nicely. This again should be able to sell for 10 to $15, but I'm hoping to push it up to 20 to 25 because I do have $3 invested into it, um, including shipping. Um, and, but if it's a nut cup, only having one is a little bit of a, tr is a little bit of a problem. But again, I do think that this will sell because of the name. So H E R E N D. Uh, and what I was unaware of, it's uh, from Hungary. So that's the way this is stamped. Herond, Hungary, hand painted. So piece of Herond porcelain. I uh, just need to do a little bit more research, maybe into replacements. I might be able to find this pattern name and that should help me uh, identify a little bit more. Uh, and then the other, the other item I picked up from there was, I, w I hesitated and I may have made a mistake, but I liked them. Um, I like pottery. I have, a, I have an art pottery collection. I like glass. I have an art glass collection. This was, uh, I picked up a pair of these uh, stoneware or uh, thrown pottery pieces that are marked Alatoria, A-L-A-T-O-R-I-A. -A -A. You can see it's an impressed mark. Uh, one of them is a little bit better. This one didn't, isn't quite as clear. There was actually a third one, but they were $4 each. And looking at the comps, they sell for about $15 each. So not a bad investment, but they're pretty hefty. And so for me to put them on Etsy, everything I do on Etsy is free shipping. I'm concerned that even having two of them, this is gonna probably end up weighing three to four pounds. It's going to impact if somebody from California were to pick one up. So I ended up only buying the two. Maybe I should have bought the three. If I could have found the fourth, I would have bought all four. I but I, and I scoured that store looking for that fourth. I was in the shoe department looking for these things. I could not find the fourth one. So I ended up deciding to just take, pick up the pair. That may have been a mistake, um, but because it's a little bit higher price than what I would typically pick up for resale at four bucks a piece, you know, I've got $8 already in this, which is not a lot of money, but I need to be able to you know, sell it for 30 plus shipping and I'm concerned about the shipping because I can't price it to cover shipping to California. So I have to kind of price it in the middle. Um, but there's been a couple of times that all of a sudden, the, and it's always the heavier items. It's like the people in California know, ha ha ha, you're giving me free shipping. I'm gonna buy the heaviest thing you own. And suddenly I'm trying to figure out how to make money. Um, so anyway, they, I, do, I love the looks of these. Um, the one that I didn't keep was slightly smaller because uh, they are clearly handmade and these are very similar in shape. That one was like the bottom of it kind of fit into this and it wasn't by design. It wasn't like it was nesting. It just, the way it was made, it was a little bit smaller. So I'm like, you know what? That one got pushed aside. So I have these two. 
Um, again, based on comps, I should be able to list them pretty easily for 25 to 30 bucks plus shipping. And I just have to figure out what the magic uh, number on shipping will be. And then I finished my uh, swing through my multi-state territory uh, visiting Missouri. And uh, that I did a couple shops, uh, both in Kansas City, Missouri, and then as I crossed, because then I went through, um, went down into the Ozarks and then over into St. Louis and then came home. I put a lot of miles on my car when I traveled. That was all in a four day period that I did that trip. Um, so in Kansas City, I found a place called City Thrift, which again was an interesting collection. It's an independent store. Um, they use grease marker, grease paint markers to mark all their stuff, which I found a little bit annoying. Um, they did have color coded sales. I clearly couldn't read the tags. So I thought white was 50% off and it ended up only being 25% off. But one of the items that I picked up was a white label and I went ahead and bought it even with the only 25% off. It is a collection of Vogue magazine cover coasters. Um, the coasters are marked with the date of the original magazine cover, and they're all primarily from the 20s. Um, clearly the coasters are not from the 20s. These have been selling fairly regularly. It's a set of four, um, kind of a plasticized top where the artwork is, and then a cork backing. Pretty regularly selling as a set of four for between 10 and 15 bucks. So I have a little over two bucks in this um, so if I can get 10 to 15 plus shipping and they're not very heavy so I might be able to ship them first class uh, it'll be a nice turnaround and they're just I I just like the looks of them um, I won't keep them uh, but I, I think that this will have a, some crossover appeal that people just there's just like fashion Vogue magazine they're gonna want them everyone uses coasters um, although I did just hold a Christmas party and was shocked how many people didn't use coasters no comment uh, and then the other item that I picked up, all of their Christmas was 75% off. This was the week before Christmas. 75% off or 50% off? 50% 50, uh, 50 off. And so I picked up, I really had no interest in picking up more Christmas because I had already some stuff that I had picked up to resell. I hadn't even listed yet. So it's just going into storage probably until next year. I might list some of it. Uh, but this one I just thought was kind of cool. Uh, I'm not huge into the dated stuff, so this is dated 1971, but this, like almost like a Majolica style paint, like this enameling paint, um, I just found this striking. And there's going to, I, I think that this could be attractive to um, some people. It won't be everyone's style and, you know, put a bow on the bottom so you can cover up the year, I don't know. Uh, it is made in Spain by uh, Keramicas uh, Seville, it looks like, um, hand enameled uh, and, and said patented on the back. So, that, I mean, it's fairly heavily marked on the back. Um, I just, I, I ended up paying $1.50 for this, which I just thought was, it, it's a smallish size, so it'll be a little bit easier to ship, not quite as heavy. Uh, a little bit of crazing, but primarily the crazing's on the back. So it's, it's just kind of a nice looking piece. So I picked it up, even though it's probably gonna sit in storage for months, um, I just did that. Uh, these I picked up at an antique store, uh, another antique mall called Relics Antique Mall in Springfield, Missouri. This is a pair of Rosenthal dishes. I like Rosenthal, I've mentioned it before, I've had several pieces of Rosenthal. Um, these, admittedly, I don't know what they are. Um, they're very, very shallow and they're oval in shape. So again, I don't think they're salts because you'd have a hard time actually scooping any salt out of there. Because of their shape, they can't be coasters because who has a glass of that shape? It's too shallow to be a nut cup. I don't know if it's a spoon rest. That was the closest I could come up with. Like maybe you're so fancy that you have a little thing that you put this along the side of your of your dinner plates and you've got some place for someone to put a, put a spoon. I don't know, but at the antique mall, I paid $2 for the pair. I had, did not hesitate. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't know how much I can sell them for because I haven't found, again, any examples of these. I'm going to treat them as coasters and salt dips, you know, in that realm. So, you know, for the pair, I'll probably be able to sell them for around 10 bucks plus shipping. So maybe list them for 15. Maybe I can slide it up a little bit because they are really nice looking and Rosenthal is a really high quality porcelain. Um, so we shall see. But it's for those who do resale, um, Antique malls aren't the best places to find things uh, for resale, but this one was, I think they were originally four bucks and then the booth was having a 50% off sale. So for two bucks, I was more than happy to take it. And then the very last stop was also in Springfield uh, before I started driving home. I found this pair of pewter um, mugs, steins, with these ceramic inserts in them. Um, I ended up paying $2 each for them. The pewter is not marked in any way. It just says um, made in the USA, but the ceramic is actually marked uh, Columbia, Columbia PA RWP. And so that's what I used to do a little bit of digging uh, before I bought them. And I did find comps. The inserts themselves uh, had sold fairly recently at the time I was looking. Uh, they had the inserts by themselves had sold at ten dollars a piece. The pair wasn't selling for much more than that. Um, typically, they were selling for around ten to fifteen dollars as a as a pair or as a set. I'm sorry. Uh, so for the two, I should be able to get twenty to twenty five bucks plus shipping uh, for a four dollar investment. So not too bad. And they were just a little bit different. I mean, again, I like to find things a little bit different. Uh, I, again, I like I like pottery. The fact that these kind of went together, I just kind of thought was kind of cool. Um, and I could totally see why there would be a, mar a market for these individually, because if you break one, all you've got is a squatty little mug. So, you know, they definitely, and, and I'm sure these squatty little mugs probably exist out there selling as squatty little mugs because you wouldn't know it's it's solid at the bottom you wouldn't know that something's supposed to go in there so the fact that i found them together for only two dollars each i this was a case where i really wanted to rescue them and make sure that they you know went on to be in a good home so that was my haul so uh these will hopefully get photographed within the next few days again my new year's resolution is to really get things up faster clearly i have failed to this point uh, because this stuff is now going on like three to four weeks old but i'm going to try and fix that get all of these things posted a couple of them may go into the antique mall so you won't be able to see those but i'll try and get as many uh, the bulk of these will go on to my etsy shop so i appreciate you watching the video uh, if you could like comment uh on the video share it with your friends if you haven't already subscribed to it uh, again my name is patrick i'm with trusty huckster mercantile you can find me on etsy and Facebook and Instagram on as TH Mercantile, Trusty Huxter Mercantile, and you've already found the YouTube channel. So again, if you could do anything to share the video, I uh, appreciate the support. And if you've got any comments, uh, let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know uh, if there's anything you would like to see more of or less of when I cover these, uh, because I had quite a bit to cover. This ran a little bit longer than I like, but um, hopefully I'll be doing them more often and more regularly, and uh, they'll be a little bit less, um, They'll be a little bit shorter. So anyway, thanks again. I appreciate your time and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.